It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Cleveland Browns and the Denver Broncos coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the NFL has us at the foot of the Rockies just west of downtown Denver at Empower Field at Mile High. Today we've got a fun little clash in the AFC as it'll be the Cleveland Browns taking on the Denver Broncos. Brandon Gunn here in Denver, joined by Charles Davis and CD. The Broncos are looking for a turnaround here in 2023. Coming off a five-win season and a last-place finish in the AFC West, but this doesn't feel like a last-place team. Nor to me, because when you look at them on offense, loaded with skill position players at wide receiver and running back, and then flip it over to the defensive side of the ball, and they can compete with anyone. They make it tough to run your offense. Meanwhile, for the Browns, they come off a 7-10 season a year ago. Not great, but not a total loss either. And you think there are building blocks in place. They are there. Look at what they did last year. Their pass defense was number five in the league. Their rushing attack, sixth best in the league. They have players. They have a system. They just need to put it all together. And off we go from Denver. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. Leading them out, the fifth-year Auburn alum got his first career starts last season. Here's Jared Stidham. For a brief time, he was thought to be a possible successor to Tom Brady while he was still in New England, but that didn't materialize. But opportunity may still knock for him to start in the NFL today. Definitely has the arm and mobility to make plays against NFL defenses. All he needs now is consistency. Okay, ready? Now the third year man back in healthy is Javante Williams. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Now it's Stidham. That's to the rookie, Marvin Mims. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 46. On the counter, here's Williams. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Had an open man that time. They end up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. To throw is Stidham. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. Riley on fourth Dixon. down, it's Riley Dixon on now to kick it away for Denver. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. 
And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. So here are the Browns under head coach Kevin Stefanski. And at quarterback, a longtime signal caller in the National Football League, former Super Bowl MVP Joe Flacco. Remember when the conversation was, is Joe Flacco elite? Well, at one point, he was elite enough to not only win a Super Bowl, but be named the MVP of that game. And for a time, one of the top paid quarterbacks in the league. Not bad for a young man who transferred to Delaware from Pitt while in college. This guy has had a great career, not many chances now to lead an offense, but still capable if put on the field. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Line of scrimmage, the 28 now as they come up on second and a couple. Now Flacco. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. He pushes through a would-be tackler to get about three yards, second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. And they'll come up second and seven. Passing play. Flacco. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. They'll give him four yards there. And now we've got a third and three. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle, and they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. I may be an analyst, but I'm also a fan. I love it when people take the big shots downfield, but he was under a lot of duress. And I think that forced the incompletion downfield. Didn't have a real good chance to find his target. And Bohorquez on to punt as he gets it away. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive. First and 10. On first and 10, it's Stidham. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. Now Stidham. And his throw is incomplete. This defense has passed its first two tests by forcing back-to-back -back incompletions. They know that there's probably another throw coming on third down. Let's see if they decide to force the issue by sending people on a blitz. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Now it's Stidham. And he's going to be brought down. Back in his own six-yard line. The sack coming from big Dalvin Tomlinson. 
Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Here's Riley Dixon now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And a fair catch taken here right at about the 40-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Browns will take over first and 10. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. They will start this drive with four. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stump that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Now it's Flacco. He's got the connection to Moore. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. So the completion results there in nine yards. And now that sets up third and two. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. The handoff to Ford up the middle. And this is not going to be enough. Was in search of two yards and only got halfway there. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. On fourth down, on is Corey Bajorquez to punt. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And out of bounds. Sailed over. Looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. Brandon, you're never quite sure what the side judge or the field judge is going to rule there. That was awfully close. But in the end, he says it passed over the one-yard line. And that's where they're going to mark it out. I mean, you can see it right there, right? See him walking up the sideline? Told him to stop right there at the one. They begin the drive with Williams. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven yard line. It's a six yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. But both teams practice this situation. And this time, the guys on offense won and in a very nice way. What a run from that position on their own goal line. Gave him some good breathing room. I wonder now. Do you still stack the line of scrimmage, or do you play normal defense? They may have backed him off with that run. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain, or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? From the 17, here's second and four. Now a toss left side, it's Williams. And he's gonna lose yardage here back to the 14 yard line. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Here's Stidham to throw. They'll set up the screen, this is Williams. 
And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. Denver has a first down on the 15-yard play. And this pass rush has really been bringing the heat. Has already gotten home a few times here in the first half. So how about the play call there? Sometimes if you can't protect, you've got to fool them. Screen passes like that can take a little steam out of what's been a relentless rush so far. Up the middle, it's Williams. Up past the 30, second down coming up. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. From the 31, here's the second and eight. Stidham. And this one is incomplete. So he's three for seven throwing the football right now. Not an awful start, but also not the sharpest of starts. No, I would agree with that. But if you're a confident quarterback and to play that position, you have to be. You just act like there's something wrong with the wind currents or something wrong with the ball. <laughs> it is not you. Keep throwing. That timing usually develops. Here's Stidham. Now a diving effort right sideline. He's got it. It's his first catch, and it'll be good for 15 at a first down. Hey, did you have one of those backyards that you had one of those, like, mats or pits like you have for high jumpers? And, you know, you had your friends throw the ball and you tried to make the spectacular catches? I didn't need a mat. <laughs> you, you just did it with the ground? Absolutely. That explains your Concrete. toughness. Concrete. That <laughs> explains your toughness right there because I think that guy was raised just like you. What a catch. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Relatively small sample size, but that's his longest run of the first quarter. Bounced it out to the outside to make it successful. And to get there, you actually need some help. It's not just your pure speed getting to the corner, making sure that the blocking is taken care of inside so the pursuit doesn't get you. And oftentimes, those wide receivers, tight ends that might be flexed out, they've got to control the edge and make sure no one from the outside can spill the play before he gets there. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Second and 10. Now a give up the middle to Williams. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. Officially nothing on that one, no gain. So they're left with still 10 to go on third down. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Now Lutz for the field goal try. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. The kick by Lutz is good. And the Broncos, the first to grace the scoreboard. It's three zip. So, Charles, they are on the board after that kick. So, three drives, three points. Obviously not the start that you were hoping for, but... They're able to erase that zero off the scoreboard. Yeah, I guess what you're saying is a point of drive is not what offenses are striving for by any stretch. They're happy they've got three now. They hope that that unlocks their offense for bigger points down the road. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. And he'll very wisely take a knee here as they'll bring this one out to the 25 on the touchback. Cleveland offense making their way out. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, 
Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Throwing here on first down, Flacco. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. They run with Ford. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Again, they turn to four. And some room to maneuver. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. The start of the second quarter and it's the Browns in control of the football. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Flacco. And that one's gonna come up a little short. It's incomplete. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. Now a second and 10. On the ground, it's Ford. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and 10. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get the third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. Hopkins kick is good. And that will tie us at 3-3. Three, three. So that kick gives them their first points of the game, CD. And it comes on the third drive, but hopefully for them that's a spark that gets that offense going. Yeah, and I would say if you're the offensive play caller, as you look at your sheet, you're trying to find that part on there that unlocks bigger points. They've struggled with a few drives so far, finally got three out of it. How do you find the end zone? That's what he's searching for now. Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And the football going back over to the Denver Broncos. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. And he'll get this up just shy of the 30. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Stidham. 
incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. The Broncos on third down, two for five to this point. This will be third and six. They'll drop to throw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. 49-yard punt, five on the return. And they will take over first and ten. Ready to take over again on offense, out comes Cleveland. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Play action, Flacco. That's caught by his tight end, Jordan Akins. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. First catch for him on the afternoon, and it results in a first down. Oh, a lot of credit to the play caller here. He saw the design in his mind and implemented it. A little zone stretcher here because they started the tight end on the left side of the formation and sent him on a crossing route. And this works really well where you can find that space between levels, and they were able to do so for good yardage. On first down, Flacco. A quick throw there is incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Here's second and ten. Now Flacco. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Baron Browning, the outside linebacker, dropping him for a loss of six. You can almost see his eyes light up defensively. I mean, as a linebacker, that's about as quick as you can get to a quarterback. So what did your third grade teacher teach you about straight lines, right? As soon as you have those, you take full advantage of them. He found a gap in the offensive line, got to the quarterback, and put him on the deck. Finding room at midfield. And they'll bring him down right at midfield, and he is well short of the first down. So the completion results there in nine yards, and it'll be fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. On fourth down on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. The Broncos about set to go on offense. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He'll let this go deep for Sutton. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, their first two drives only yielded three points. They might be thinking it's time to make something happen. Push the ball downfield and try and gain some points that way. Unfortunately, incomplete. Here's second and ten now from about the 32. 
out of the gun, Stidham. Oh, he'll air this one deep for Judy. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Back to throw. And a big loss here as he's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Riley, Riley Dixon now to punt it away. Seven yards on the punt that time, just one yard on the return. And it will be first and ten as they take over. The Browns offense heading back out to take possession. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and ten. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 50 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at him and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go-around, the offense won the challenge. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. Looking for the out route, and he's got more. It'll be a gain of five, and that will bring up second down. A gain of five brings up second and five at their 48-yard line. This is Ford. And he's got it across midfield and into Denver territory. Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. But if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Third and just one, it's Flacco. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. No gain at all on the play there, and that'll bring up fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Denver's offense now set to go. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. From the 29, here's the second and four. They go play action now, Stidham. This one swung out to Williams. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 to mark him down at the 39. A 10 yard pickup and it's enough for a Broncos first down. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, 
that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. Stidham's throw here caught by Mims. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. And now at this point in the first half, you've got to realize as an offense, you're not going to get it all back in one fell swoop. This is going to be about sustained drives and making sure you finish with points. And that's a good throw there for a first down. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. From midfield now, here's Stidham. His throw incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. The Broncos on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is third and ten. Still a hit, and he lost it. There, this is picked up by the Browns. And they take over. They'll set up shop at the 46-yard line. The pocket collapsed around him. I know we talk about it a lot, but a QB has to have that sixth sense, doesn't he? He really does. And I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame. And anytime he didn't get rid of the ball within the, the right amount of time, they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him this is what that time is. Just what you're talking about, training him to understand this is the mount you have. Make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. They'll run on first down. It's Ford, and they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. What a way to start a drive. An excellent run, a tone setter, and now if you want to take a shot on second down and go play action and make it look like the same exact play and throw it over the top, you can do so because you've established the run in a big way. On second down, it's Ford. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. Okay, second and one, you get nothing. What now on third and one? Sorry about that. I was so excited I jumped in on you. This is almost like practice to me. Line it up and do it again. You didn't get it right the first time. Just get right back on the ball and go. It doesn't matter that they know you're coming. You ought to be able to pick up this short yardage. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to convert, albeit not by much, on third and a yard. There are a lot of different formulas to winning football, but one constant over the years winning on third down. That pickup there was big because they had struggled throughout this one. They look to throw on first and 10 with Flacco. He finds his man complete. That's Ford. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it, and that'll bring up second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Now Flacco. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. But you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. The 25-yard line is what they need here. This is third down. Here's Flacco. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 23. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. The third down conversion successful. A gain of 11. First and 10 here for Flacco. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And the Broncos are going to take possession here. It's 
gets a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20 yard line. Oh, that's a beautiful read there by the safety. Zone coverage, so he's just going to sit back and watch. He knows he can't get beat deep because he has the end line to protect him. So he can react to everything in front of him, and he makes a great break on the football and comes down with the interception. And coming out now, the Broncos. And they got across the 50 last time, but fumbled and turned it over, so they'll be looking to have a short-term memory here, Mr. Davis. Not only a short-term memory, but a whole lot better ball security. <laughs> because if they take care of the ball, continue to move it, their chances of scoring some points, they've got to feel pretty good about. They thought they had things moving in the right direction last time. Fumbles, they don't just affect you on offense. They affect your overall team because now your defense has to make that stand up. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Now it's Stidham. Open man is the tight end, Troutman. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Yeah, it looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. to throw is Stidham. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Here's Stidham. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Stidham. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because any completions on first and second down, now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Here's Stidham to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and 10. Now it's Stidham. Throw left side complete. That's Williams. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. They gotta walk that walk, baby. Get on out here. Get on. Second down and four. Now Stidham. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Out routes are always timing routes. And if the timing's off just a little bit, 
it can really throw off them. Yeah, I believe they buzz down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, play. that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. On first down, Stidham. Throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Now Lutz for the field goal try. He hit his first, this one from 40 yards out. The kick by Lutz is good. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals. It's 6-3. to three. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Cleveland offense ready to go. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. On the stop that time, it was Josie Jewell. So we've reached halftime here on New Year's Eve. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams. This is a very level first half, and I'd expect to see more of the same after the break. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. going to see the football first but they trail here as we resume play on EA Sports and the mile high air in full effect as that's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback the Browns offense set to go to work to begin this third quarter well, out of the locker rooms here they come their first drive of the third quarter and Charles they're trailing in this ball game but we got a tight one and set up to be a very entertaining second half and as we know partner in the NFL there's trailing and there's trailing right sometimes you're discouraged by how much you're down but in this case this is a tight ball game so there's a sense of optimism here I think they went into half and looked at their play sheet and said these are the plays we really like we say we use them to start the second half and get us going and he'll get this up just shy of the 30. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 89 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. 
Well, as we've learned over the years, just because a guy plays left tackle doesn't mean he doesn't have run blocking abilities. And we just saw it there. Controlled the line of scrimmage, created a big gain. That's kind of a bonus. He's there to protect that high value that you have back under center, but he creates space in the run game. Yeah, not only can he dance, he can mash, too. Boy, nowhere to go at all on that first down run as they will get to him behind the line of scrimmage. When you're lateral to the line of scrimmage, linebackers keep those shoulders square so they can go up and down. But when it's time to go, turn your shoulders just like a running back. Get through the line and hit the runner in the backfield. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Moore, the man in motion. On second down now, it's Ford. And he is going to lose yardage here. A loss of one, now a loss of two, and they're staring at a third and 13. Well, coaches stress their defense being physical. They don't just mean the big guys. How about the guys on the outside, the cornerbacks? It's not just their job to patrol the airspace. They can get involved in the run game as well. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he is caught. And he's going to be pushed out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And the offense is saying to itself right now, only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. That's to the right side and complete to Njoku. And he's brought down right at the five-yard line. Give him two on the play. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Flacco. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Amari Cooper, a five-yard touchdown. And the Browns have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit. Found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free. And his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth, almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. They'll try to get this running game going with Williams. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Stidham. And he's got him. Got his man on the end round. Complete. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. 
He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have the Broncos first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. They give it to Williams, running right. He'll take it past the 40 to the 41, second down. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Second and seven. They'll set up a throw. Open man downfield is Judy. He's got it. And all the way home for a Broncos score. Jerry Judy, 59 yards. And the Broncos have taken the lead here in this third quarter. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. What's good on the extra point, and that gives him a three-point lead. Touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. They had seized the lead there for a little bit with a starting drive in the third quarter, but a moment ago in the touchdown that puts them back behind. So their defense is under siege a little bit right now because they have not able to solve their opponents. So they've got to keep hammering away on offense and try and win this one in what appears to be a shootout. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. And he's got Cooper on the out route. That's complete. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Up the middle they go. Four. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. 92 yards rushing for him now as he's done it on 19 carries. Well, you know they had a third down play on standby just in case, but he says no need with that carry. Runs like that will continually earn him more work in this and future contests. Throwing here on first down, Flacco. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion and a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try to defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 23 yards, the final tally. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, 
We see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. On first down. It's Ford and tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. Then everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Now second and nine. Flacco looks to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play. One that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. So third down now. They need the 27-yard line for a first. Here's Flacco. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And this is going to be another first down as he'll make the tackle at the Broncos 21. A good pick up there for the Browns, 15 yards. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. How about this? They'll try the option. Left side. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't, and at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, so they didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. On second down, it's Ford. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Jerome Ford taking it in from the 20 and the Browns are once again back in front you get in a second and long situation down here in the red zone I'd say most defensive coaches would think pass let's bring some pressure so this is kind of a tendency breaker here to hit him with something on the ground and he'll take it all the way into the end zone with the extra point and that will make this a four-point game the touchdown Dustin Hopkins will kick it away and this will not be returnable it's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback so the Broncos coming out now so remember Charles last time they were out here they scored but they just saw the opposition score and they're trailing right now so they're trying to keep pace here they need a touchdown drive well if you're a fan of offense you're loving this but if you're a fan of defense this is tough to watch and it's also tough to keep that up when you just watch your opponent march down the field on a scoring drive that lasts into double digit snaps. You need a score here not just to follow the momentum from your last drive, but put the onus back on your opponent. And that's what they're doing right now, swapping that onus back and forth. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with a short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. Now Stidham on second down. This will be caught. Judy. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one good for 26 and a first down. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big time play right there. In motion left here, one of their tight ends. Now a handoff, here's Williams. Broke through some contact, but unable to reach the 40. 
43 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Second down and three. Off the play fake. Here's Stidham. He's got his tight end. It's Chris Manhurts. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 29-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. They try the left side here with Williams. A beautiful fake. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. That good for 22 on a first down. He had his eyes on the end zone once he hit the secondary, but they're finally able to slow him down. Yeah, and I've got to look at this one from the defensive point of view. You just mentioned finally able to slow him down. They've got to figure out a way to make that at the point of attack, at the line of scrimmage, because once he gets through, he's shredding them. And it's caught. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. Williams will take it in. Touchdown, Denver. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Alonzo looked to add the extra point. And that one gives them a three-point lead. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it was capped off by a Javante Williams touchdown. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He's up over 100 yards, and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's the combination you want in your runner. That's a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. They'll start this drive out on the ground. Pushes past him. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. It's been an excellent day for him running the football, no doubt, as he continues to soar well past 100 yards. Yeah, it almost feels like he can just grab his briefcase and head home after putting in a full day's work at the office, doesn't it? Right back to him on first down. And he's across the 45. It'll be second down. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. From the 46-yard line, a second down and six. Here's Flacco. And this throw incomplete. Well, the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that you can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. He's going to look in zone here for Cooper. And this is incomplete. Oh, he looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. 
So both offenses come to life here in this third quarter as this is shaping up for a good finish. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And Denver getting set to take the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage. But stay in bounds and let that clock tick. Now Stidham off play action. A short one to the tight end, Troutman. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that's going to lead to a third down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route. And he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Now it's Stidham. Screenplay set up for Williams. And he will have the Broncos first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. For as many sacks as this defense has, you can understand their willingness to try and get upfield and get another. So what a really smart play call here to use their aggression against them, go with the screen, and they're able to get the first down. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Williams. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Sometimes I think cornerbacks can benefit from the fact that quarterbacks might just forget about the idea that they might be near the line of scrimmage. How about the anticipation there sneaking in and making a big play in the backfield? Play action. It's Stidham. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. It was Miles Garrett that time who got in there and brought him down. This is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen, but somehow they're still behind in the game. I would expect all of this defensive pressure to translate to them taking a lead, and thus far, it hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Throw right side is going to be caught by Judy. Short completion, just four yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion and you count on your D to make it stand up. Dixon, the punter, is on as he sends it away. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. First and 10 here for Flacco. To the left side and complete for Amari Cooper. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. On second down, Flacco to throw. A quick throw there is incomplete. 
a lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, he locked it on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. The Browns on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have the Browns first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. That's not the first time they've looked his way when they've needed a big play. He's been the go-to guy all game long. And they get the hookup again on third down to keep this drive alive. And again, it's Flacco to throw. And this one too low. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the leg's still there. This has been a tough game. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. From the gun, Flacco. He'll get this one to Cooper complete. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Amari Cooper, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Browns use the defensive breakdown to take the lead away here in the fourth. I know we often laugh and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game, and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. Extra point good by Hopkins. And that will make this a four-point game. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Denver's offense ready to go again. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. Throw on first down with Stidham. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Well, that one was all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Here's Stidham. Quickly into the hands of Mims. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know, this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there. Not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Well, that's a defensive coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Throwing again here, Stidham. To the sideline and incomplete. That time he was looking for Jerry Judy. And that'll make it third down.
Now, right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Well, collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number, it's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. Here's Riley Dixon now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. Amari Cooper and the rest of the offense heading back out there now. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. They'll start this drive out on the ground. Shifts by him. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Well, you know me, partner. I never tell him to back off of being aggressive. But sometimes you see the consequences when you're overly aggressive and you don't secure tackles. Guys break through. Trying to sell out to pry that football loose. And just as you said, cost some yardage. Yeah, you got to go get him. Stand him up first before you go for the ball. Don't just go for it initially. Flacco's throw taken in by Cooper here. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11 yard pickup. Uh, he's certainly been a huge factor in this one. He's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection. It doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Flacco's throw there complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A game there of 30 big ones. I'm pretty sure any quarterback will tell you it's nice to have a tight end that can stretch the field. And how about him right there, working in the heart of the defense, and they connect on a very nice play downfield, a combination of talent and toughness to go into the briar patch. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Setting up to throw Flacco. Down inside the 10. And did he get in? No, down at the one yard line. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Ford. Diving for the end zone, and he is in. Touchdown. Sometimes offensive can get too cute down near the goal line, but there's nothing fancy about this one. As Coach Lombardi would say, we get a seal here, and we get a seal here, and we run this play in the alley. And that's good work to hit the hole hard and finish in the end zone. On is Hopkins now for the extra point. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. That time, a six-play drive. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. 
Yeah, no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And yeah, the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. They go play action now. Stidham. And his throw is going to be incomplete. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. From the gun, it's Stidham. And that almost their first INT of the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. A couple of quick incompletions, and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to crowd the throwing lanes? Stidham. And that is incomplete. And I think we'll probably see them go for it here on fourth down. No reason not to. Down a couple of scores, they have to try and make something good happen. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. They'll try and throw for it with Stidham. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. The Broncos unable to convert here on fourth. And the Browns are going to get this thing back. Excellent field position. Another opportunity now for the Browns offense. But they can thank their defense for another stop. And now look at the score, where they've got the football. They're looking pretty good. They're looking excellent because now you're thinking to yourself, let's just take some time off the clock, work it down. And of course, you put another touchdown on the board, you pretty much say bye-bye to this one. Play calling here can be a little bit more conservative because of the lead. A little bit more conservative. The biggest thing, everyone understands how to get the ball downfield and how to stay in bounds and make sure the clock keeps running. And intercepted, maybe the turning point they need. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And the Broncos are right back in this football game. That is the play they needed in a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. No doubt about it. They did what they had to do to give themselves a chance to get back into the game. They turned it over to the offense. They are now in charge. Now they need to execute. The Broncos about set to go on offense. The interception was a great starting point, but now they need points pretty quickly, down two scores. After the interception, here's Stidham. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Here's Stidham to throw. Out quickly to Judy. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. In this situation, the dictation is coming from the defense, right? They're going to tell you. You can have six, seven yards, do that all the way downfield. Let's just go ahead and take the time off the clock. I think they've got to start attacking vertically a lot more. And now they're in the hurry up. Stidham now to throw on third down. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked up by Denzel Ward. And he's going to get this one to the 23-yard line. With the points that we've seen scored, neither defense has been at their best, but these guys, they've been a little bit better, Charles, and a nice interception there. Yeah, you're right about that, Brandon. Let's face it. It's not always how you start. It's how you finish, right? So maybe you have a rough game all the way along, but if you make a big play like that at the right time, it can make everything turn out just okay.
They'll run on first down. Four. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Yeah, the Browns are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears to have already been decided. Going for the knockout punch. They'll try and run. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. From the two now, second and goal. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Now they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. They'll try to run for it with Ford. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Jerome Ford taking it in from a yard out. And the Browns tack on another score as they have dominated this fourth quarter. So the second down run didn't work. They run it again on third down and get in. I wasn't sure if they might pass it, Charles. We know that they like to mix it up down here around the goal line. Yeah, almost felt like the offensive line said forget mixing it up. Let's call our favorite running play over our best blockers, and let's get this one in. Hopkins with the extra point, and the lead is up to 18 now. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Denver's offense now set to go. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, They've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out-personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked up by Denzel Ward. And they're going to be set up in the red zone at the 15. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And barring mistakes, they should be able to kneel this one out and finish it off. And there's only one timeout remaining on the defensive side of the ball, so that doesn't really come into play either. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. The handoff to Ford up the middle. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Alex Singleton, the linebacker, there on the tackle. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. 
Here's a second and eight. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Ford, and he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game, and while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. Here is third and five. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Dustin Hopkins on the 